It's the Rob Carson Show. Are you ready to be pod smacked? Now, here's Rob Carson. Hello and welcome to a October 11th edition of the Rob Carson Show podcast. For those of you who are downloading it, episode number 185. Episode number 185. You can hear this uh, this program uh, every day of the week on the Podcast Radio Network. Podcast Radio Network, it's right there. It's the audio version, runs at uh, 5 o'clock Central Standard Time, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and then, of course, on LibertyOneTV.com every day at 4 o'clock Central Standard Time, 5 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. LibertyOneTV.com is a terrific service featuring uh, some of America's uh, best talk show commentators, um, I'm not sure if I'm in that group, but anyway, I'm part of it. And uh, if you become a member, it'd be great. Okay, if you like my show, become a member. It's ten dollars a month. Pretty, pretty cool. Cheaper than Netflix. You're going to get a daily show, um, usually about forty-five minutes or so of uh, commentary, audio, and comedy. All right. So LibertyOneTV.com. Become a member, will ya? Got a lot of stuff to get to. I think we need to start with Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein is an animal. All right. Um, everybody in Hollywood knew it. Okay. Everybody in Hollywood knew it. It wasn't a dirty little secret. It wasn't a secret at all. Um, there were, uh, uh, there are a host of, of new allegations coming out. Uh, uh, Mira Sorvino saying that she was uh, approached by this guy. He's a creep. He had a modus operandi that was generally to lure women up to his uh, hotel room. Basically, uh, pleasure himself in front of them, uh, attempt to uh, molest them. Three women have come out and said that they actually were raped by him and he paid off eight women, okay? So everybody knew this was going on. Everybody in Hollywood knew this was going on. But they were too terrified to speak up. If you've ever had uh, uh, somebody powerful in your life who maybe held sway over your job or held sway over your uh, well, college um, class. I had that happen to me when I was in college. I had a, uh, a professor who uh, made uh, untoward advances at me, and I wasn't interested because I'm not gay. He was married with two children. So it's, it's, a, um, it's an awful thing to experience. I wonder about the path of destruction that he has left behind him. we got a lot of audio I want to get to. I want to start off with a, uh, a little piece of satire. A friend of mine named Jim Gossett put this together, Frank Sinatra, singing about uh, Harvey Weinstein. The days of Weinstein's over. Harvey got a pass. Yep. For play and grab ass. Big time. Cause the media protects this filthy rat. Cause he's a Democrat. Big time bundler. He's a one of their fat cats. The late night guys avoid it. They have Harvey, they won't touch. They love him so much. Jimmy Kimmel's sad. He don't know what to do. He probably cried. Cause the days of Harvey Weinstein are through. Okay, guys. Big finish now. Let's give it to old Harvey one last time. The late night. Those creeps avoid it. Donald Trump, they'll bash. But Harvey gives him cash. Colbert showed up on his colonoscopy. Ha! Now the days of the Weinstein are history. Yep, he says he's going to make a comeback. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think there is any saving this guy. But he's doing what Hollywood types do. He's uh, boarded a, a private jet bound for Europe for a sex addiction treatment. So he got in a private jet, <clears throat> going to enter a live-in facility. 
will deal both with sex and other behavioral issues. Uh, he wants to come back fresh with new ideas, and nobody is going to hear them because you're a scumbag, and you've left a path of emotional shrapnel behind you. You've damaged people. You're a POS, majorly. Harvey Weinstein's wife, designer Georgina Chapman, has announced she will be leaving him amid sexual harassment, assault allegations. He and she have been married since 2007. They have two kids, a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. She uh, said in a statement, my heart breaks for the women who have suffered tremendous pain because of those unforgivable actions. I have chosen to leave my husband caring for my young children as my first priority, and I ask the media for privacy at this time. Eight women have come out against a Weinstein in the new, new, uh, new York Times piece that came out last week. He reached financial set settlements with at least eight accusers. The New Yorker on Tuesday told the story of over a dozen accusers, including several who claimed Weinstein assaulted them or raped them. Major movie stars Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow said that uh, they were part of a long list of women who uh, were harassed by this guy. Unreal. Just honestly, there are no words. Mira Sorvino. Uh, she has starred in a, several of Weinstein's movies, including Mighty Aphrodite, 1995's Mighty Aphrodite. She won an Oscar for that. At a hotel a room in uh, the Toronto International Film Festival in 1995, he started massaging my shoulders. This is, uh, this is uh, Mira, which made me feel uncomfortable. Then he tried to get more physical, sort of chasing me around. Everybody knew about this. Here's Seth MacFarlane, 2013, uh, announcing the Best Actress nominees for the Oscars. And it's, and it's very clear. Uh, everybody knows it. There's a little uh, kind of a wink and a nod, like Harvey has got a real problem. Here it is. Best performance by an actress in a supporting role are Sally Field in Lincoln, Anne Hathaway in Les Miserables, Jackie Weaver in Silver Linings Playbook. Helen Hunt in The Sessions. And Amy Adams in The Master. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. Everybody knew it. They got the joke, right? You, you don't get a joke like that unless you know what's going on. I like Seth MacFarlane, by the way. I think he's great. Heather Graham. My Alexa just started talking to me. Weird. Heather Graham wrote an op-ed for Variety. She said that uh, Harvey implied that she needed to have sex with him in order to star in one of his films. Uh, in the early 2000s, Harvey Weinstein called me into his office. with a pile of scripts on his desk. He says, I want to put you in one of my movies. Later in the conversation, he mentioned that he had an agreement with his wife. He could sleep with whomever he wanted. When she was out of town, I walked out of the meeting feeling uneasy. There was no explicit mention that to star in one of these films, I had to sleep with him, but the subtext was there. A few weeks later, I was asked to do a follow-up meeting at his hotel. I called one of my actor's friends to explain my discomfort with the situation. She offered to come with me. Apparently, she, uh, her friend couldn't make it, and um, Heather knew something was going to happen, and she canceled the meeting. She said, that was the end of my uh, the encounter. I was never uh, hired for one of his films, and I didn't speak out about my experience. If I had spoken up a decade ago, would I have saved countless women from the same experience I had or worse? And this is something she has to live with. And there are a lot of women who just didn't say anything because you're afraid. It's a power player. I wonder how many careers were ruined because of that. I work in the, industry, in the entertainment industry. <clears throat> There are people who can blacklist you. There are people who can just put the word out, whatever, about you. And you don't, you don't, get, a, you don't get a job. The jobs are few and far between in talk radio. And I'm just saying that it, it happens. It happens. Um, Hillary Clinton finally did speak out against Harvey Weinstein. Basically, uh, where's the, I've got it right here. There's so much stuff to get to. Uh, so much, oh yeah, here we go. Um, Hillary Clinton, here's what she said. Uh, I was shocked and appalled by the revolution, revelations about Harvey Weinstein. 
The behavior described by women coming forward cannot be tolerated. Their courage and the support of others is critical in helping to stop this kind of behavior. I mean, wow. He apparently was a bundler for both of her presidential campaigns, raised a lot of money for her. I think she also said this is uh, fine if you're married to the guy. It is remarkable that Bill Clinton is silent on these things, even though it's a vast right-wing conspiracy, right? Isn't it a vast right-wing conspiracy? Bill Clinton did the same thing for decades, just like Harvey Weinstein. Ridiculous. Oh, Ronan Farrow uh, is a... apparently tried to sell his story to NBC News. He had the story, uh, the report, in which three women, including actress Asia Argento, accused the uh, mogul of rape, said it was in in NBC's hands as early as August, according to multiple sources, both inside and outside the network. Apparently, uh, NBC had concerns with the way Farrow's story was sourced, apparently. By the way, Weinstein hosted a $33,000 per plate dinner fundraiser at uh, his Manhattan home for Hillary Clinton last year. Though it was not immediately clear if the former candidate would return or donate any of the money, as other Democrat politicians have done. The Obamas have spoken out about it, and they haven't uh, haven't decided they're going to return the money he raised for them. Uh, The president said, the former president, Michelle, and I have been disgusted by the recent reports about Harvey Weinstein. Any man who demeans and degrades women in such fashion needs to be condemned and held accountable regardless of wealth or status. Uh, And we should work to build a culture, including by empowering our girls and teaching our boys decency and respect so we can make such behavior less prevalent in the future. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Harvey Weinstein gave $5,000 to Obama's 2012 campaign. More than $66,000 to the Obama Victory Fund, apparently. Tucker Carlson has called out Weinstein and his uh, enablers last night on Fox News. Not all accusations of sexual harassment are real. This one is. But the bigger scandal is the reaction to it, or the lack of reaction. Harvey Weinstein isn't just a movie producer. He's a political figure on the left, a major donor to the Democratic Party, a personal friend to countless liberal activists and politicians, all of which helps explain why the reaction from self-described defenders of women has been so muted. For the days after the story broke, Democrats in Hollywood and Washington seemed to freeze, unsure of what to say, hoping the whole thing would just die down and go away. Blow over. It hasn't. Those actors who lecture you from the Oscar podium every year about their virtue and your lack of it, Mm. suddenly silent. Hillary Clinton traveling on a book tour whose whole purpose is to call out sexism in American society. She said not a single word about her old friend Harvey Weinstein for five full days. The truth is, Weinstein could never have gotten away with any of this without enablers like Hillary Clinton and the rest of the so-called creative community in Hollywood. Yep. They knew about his behavior. It was common knowledge in that world. Everybody knew. The New York Times came close to running a story about Weinstein's harassment more than a decade ago, but pulled back at the last minute under political pressure, which tells you a lot. Yeah. And I had heard also that uh, there was a story that was going to come out in the New York Times in 2004 but apparently Matt Damon and Russell Crowe got involved and uh, called the publication and, and they uh, leaned on him a little bit. For whatever that's worth. I, I don't know. Hillary was slammed by Amanda Carpenter on uh, CNN on Tuesday for being a, and this is on CNN, I couldn't believe it actually, for uh, uh, enabling sexual abuse. I thought this was pretty uh, ballsy of uh, Amanda Carpenter. I don't know a lot of her work, but here's what, here's the exchange. He needs therapy, like he didn't need it after he lost the first few million dollars or whatever it was. And so I think the key to uncovering a lot of this information is getting these guys to, to feel like they're losing power and influence, and that's when we find out all the information. I'm not entirely sure I would agree with that. Uh, Roger Ailes was certainly very powerful at the time yep. that uh, these stunning revelations. And a lot of conservatives were silent on Roger Ailes, too, guys. Came down, and then further revelations of settlements uh, came out uh, subsequently. But um, I find it so strange that people keep on trying to 
name Hillary Clinton as though she's culpable when Hillary Donald Clinton Trump is not is president in the right White now House. because she enabled I mean, if, sexual if, abuse. If let's, George let's be Clooney clear and Ben that. Affleck, who were working with Harvey Weinstein for many, many years, both have explicitly come out and said that they're just learning of this now. Sure. I don't think it's fair to impute any of this knowledge to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has a track record of being slow on the draw. Frank, during the Clinton administration, she covered up for her during husband. She helped gaslight America on this, calling Monica Lewinsky a crazy lunatic. No, no I, I mean, normally I would not bring this up. This is what we're talking about. Right this Harvey is, this is how Now, you know what's amazing? When, when somebody tries to bring up another case, in that being Hillary Clinton, uh, the left always goes crazy and you're distracting, you're distracting, but they're not afraid to drag Donald Trump into this. Uh, the View was discussing this in their uh, usually in-depth fashion. I, I, I really can't watch The View. This was from, I believe, Monday. Uh, the View cast members talking about um, Harvey Weinstein. Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein just got hit with new sexual harassment allegations. The claims come from former assistants and stars like Ashley Judd, who says he invited her to watch him take a shower. Hello? Why is it that in all these high-profile cases, the guys have such a strange idea about what turns a woman on? Why do they think, why do they think, wait, we want to be grabbed by the genitalia? Okay, so they can immediately go to Donald Trump, but don't go to Bill Clinton. <laughs> Where's the picture? There he is. Or possibly scrubbed with a loofah. Or treated to the eye candy of watching him bathe. That's amazing. They, they, can, they can refer to Donald Trump, but they'll never say anything about Bill Clinton, even though Bill Clinton uh, paid off at least one person, uh, attacked another woman, a Juanita Broderick. There's a little bit more from The View on Harvey. And he's repeatedly dismissed this as locker room talk. And uh, his... This is talking about the P-word video? The porters, you know, his posse has gone around all weekend talking about, you know, this is locker room talk, locker room talk. And uh, just wondering what you thought of that locker room talk. He's not locker in a locker room. room. It's not locker room talk. You know, I was in uh, Atlantic City this weekend working on a piece for... You know, they could make, they could make uh, Harvey Weinstein into a punchline. That's what they were doing there. But it's Donald Trump... They went after him, you know, like like uh, sharks on chum, like uh, crows on a on a carcass. <laughs> so, a little bit more on this because I have some audio, some very damning audio. Um, Harvey Weinstein back in 2015, uh, the NYPD had set up a sting operation because uh, apparently Harvey Weinstein attempted to grab the breast of a. Uh, a young model slash actress. And uh, she went and reported it. And they said, well, let's get you to wear a wire. So um, she wore a wire. And um, this is what he attempted to do. What do we have to do here? Nothing. I'm going to take a shower. You sit there and have a drink. Water. I don't drink. Uh, can I stay on the bar? No. You must come here now. No. Wow. <laughs> Please, I'm not going to do anything. I swear on my children. Please come I swear in. on my children. On everything. I'm a famous I'm, guy. I'm feeling Please. very uncomfortable right Please now. Please come in now. And one minute. And if you want to leave, when the guy comes with my jacket, Why you can Why you touch my breast? No, please. Touch my breast. Come on. I'm used to that. <clears throat> Are you used please. to that? Yes, come in. Here's no, but I'm not used to that. I won't do it again. Come on. Sit here. Don't ruin your friendship with me for five minutes. It's, I know, but it's kind of like, it's too much for me, I can't. Please, you're making a big scene here. No, Please. but I want to leave. Okay, bye. How just ungodly creepy. I mean, uh, I, I honestly, I don't understand this sort of behavior. I To, to victimize somebody like this? To, to victimize somebody like this, just to get off in a shower. Here's a little bit. Here's the, here's the end. I'll, I'll see about playing the entire tape, but here's a little more, a longer version of it. If I can get it to play. Hold on. Occasionally, this website logs me out, so I need to reboot it. So give me one second and I shall. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> Here we are. Come on, load up, please. All right, hold on. Let me try this one more time. We'll get to the uh, we'll get to the audio in just one second. But 
Like I said, if I can get this thing to sign me in, I'll do it. Uh, one person who's actually um, actually uh, defending Harvey Weinstein, of, of all people, is um, Lindsay Lohan. Okay? Here's Lindsay Lohan on Instagram talking about Harvey Weinstein. Hi, this is Lindsay Lohan. Uh, hi, I'm in Dubai. I'm home. Uh, and I feel very bad for Harvey Weinstein right now. I don't think it's right what's going on. Uh, I think Georgina needs to take a stand and be there for her husband. And he's never harmed me or done anything wrong to me. And we've done several movies together. And so I think everyone needs to stop. I think it's wrong. So stand up. Okay. Maybe she was just too wasted to remember it. Uh, do you think that? Maybe? Here is a um, a little bit longer version of the, of the assault in a hotel. Now it doesn't want to load for me. Well, I guess we won't play it then. Uh, I won't play it. What do we don't have wait. To do there we go. Here? I'm going to take a shower. You sit there and have Sorry a drink. Sorry about that. Water. I don't drink. Uh, don't can I stay water. on the bar? No. You must come here now. No. You must come in here now. Please. No, I don't want to. I'm not doing anything with you. I'm not embarrassing you. I'm sorry. I, I don't don't come know. In here. No, yesterday was a kind of aggressive no, for me. I, know, it, I, I need to know a person to I be touched. I won't do a thing. I don't want I would think, please, I swear I won't. Just sit with me. Don't embarrass me in the hotel. Don't, don't embarrass me in the hotel. Sit with me, I promise. Want to. Please sit there. Please. One minute. No, I ask I can't. you. Go to the bathroom. Please, I don't want to do something I don't want go to. Go to the bathroom. Come here. Listen to me. I want wow. To I'm not going to do anything. You'll never see me again after this. You'll never see me again after this. If you, don't, if you embarrass me in this hotel, I'm not embarrassing you. It's all, just that I don't, I don't feel comfortable. I mean, don't have a fight with me in the hall. Please, I'm not going to do anything. I swear, my children, oh. please come in. On everything, I'm a famous I'm, guy. I'm please, feeling very comfortable right please now. Please come in now, and one minute. And if you want to leave, when the guy comes with my Why jacket, yesterday you, know, you touch my breast. No, please, I'm sorry. Just come on. I'm used to that. Come on. I'm used, to, used that. to that. Yes, come in. No, but I'm not used to that. I won't do it again. Come on, sit here. Wow. No, I don't want to. If you do this now, you will embarrass me. But no, no. Fine. Never call me again. Okay? Sorry. Nice. I promise you I won't do anything. Guys, I know, but yes, it was too the guys much. Coming. I will never do another thing to you. Five minutes. Don't ruin your friendship with me for five minutes. It's, I know, but it's kind of like it's too much for me. I can't. Please, you're making a big scene here. No, Please. but I want to leave. Okay, fine. She didn't fall prey to him. She probably saved herself from getting raped. Unbelievable. Donna Karen, fashion designer, said she's sorry. She uh, earlier this week said that uh, women were asking for trouble by the way they dress, presenting themselves the way they do. Uh, in a statement on Monday, she said her remarks were taken out of context. From a fashion designer who designs the clothes that women wear. Okay, <clears throat> I think we're done with this. Let's move on to some other stuff. Uh, looks like Roger Goodell, the NFL, meeting with league owners to, uh, to rule, maybe once and for all, what freedoms can or can't be expressed during playing of the national anthem. Uh, he hopes uh, of getting back to football and bringing some closure to the political Pandora's box that has devoured headlines in the 2017 season. Memo circulated to 32 teams. Goodell expressed a strong desire to move past the controversy. He also advocated that players stand during the National Anthem. Quote, like many of our fans, we believe that everyone should stand for the National Anthem. It is an important moment in our game. We want to honor flag and country, and uh, our fans expect that of us. We also care deeply about our players and respect their opinions and concerns about critical social issues. Blah, blah, blah. We need to move past this controversy, and we want to do that together with our players. So we'll see. Donald Trump um, Tuesday called for changes to tax law affecting the National Football League. So why is the NFL getting massive tax break while at the same time disrespecting our anthem flag and country? Change the tax law. You can't use the tax law punitively. Sorry, Mr. Trump, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. I, I agree with a lot of the things you say, but that is frightening, frightening that you would say that about changing the tax law. There's a uh, guy named Common. Okay. Common, I, I know he's a rapper or whatever. He says that uh, Jerry Jones telling his players, if we are disrespecting the flag, then we won't play, period. That's what he said. Common says it's like a slave owner mentality, to be honest. 
you gotta you gonna do what I say on this, what he said. ESPN, Mike Wilbon, and I don't watch ESPN. I just, I'm not a sports dude. Compared Jerry Jones to a uh, plantation owner, essentially. Here is the uh, here is the exchange on ESPN. Yeah, Tony, I, I got a serious problem here. A week ago, I said I thought Jerry Jones displayed some leadership because he seemed to understand compromise, saying, I, I, I need to be with my players, and he got down and linked arms and all this stuff. And then he said, but I want to honor the anthem. And I understand that. And it seemed like that was where he was going. But now it just seems like it was as phony as a $3 bill. And the word that comes to my mind, and I don't care who doesn't like me using it, is plantation. The players are here to serve me, and they will do what I want no matter how much I pay them. They are not equal to me. Okay. Uh, honestly, th this is just, to me, such an uh, offense to those who spent their lives in bondage, those who were beaten and tortured and raped, those, were, those people who were forced to work every day in the fields and die and die young and broken and being sold on a block and having their families separated and sold off. Uh, generations of people who experience that, there's no comparison. And, and honestly, this sort of inflammatory crap, it, it, is, it is awful. It is, it is despicable. It's an insult to the memory of those who suffered so much. It is an insult to, it would be like saying that uh, Jerry Jones is Hitler and his players are the Jews. You've got to do what I say. You know, it's, that's, that's as insulting and sickening as that. All right? It is as insulting and sickening as that, to say the least. My phone's ringing. It's my son. I got to call you back. I'm, in, I'm doing my podcast. I got to call you back. That's professional, isn't it? I, I'm sorry. I have to answer this, the phone as my son. It's an emergency, but I don't think it is. So anyway, uh, let's move on. Jo, uh, Joe Namath. Joe Namath was on Fox and Friends talking about this, and he actually agreed with me. And, he, and here's the point that I've said about this from the beginning: the players do not have the right to kneel or sit during the national anthem. They have the ability to. Uh, the NBA says you've got to stand during the national anthem and face the flag. That's it. There are um, uh, very few things that a player can do to express himself um, uh, during a football game. They have uh, punishment for uh, uh, excessive celebration after, a, uh, after a, a touchdown. They have punishments for, well, like, for instance, uh, there were some players who attempted to wear cleats to um, commemorate 9-11. Uh, Those were rejected in, in Dallas last year. Uh, players wanted to stick her on their helmets so they could, or a patch, I don't know what it was, uh, to honor six police officers that were murdered, and they in the, NFL, in the NFL said no. So it's not a bastion of free speech, and I've said this before. If you go into Best Buy uh, and you want to work at Best Buy, you wear the blue shirt. If you try to wear something else, they will tell you change it or you're, you're done. That's it. If you're at McDonald's, you can't say, welcome to McDonald's. What the hell do you want? Okay? No, you will be fired. You will be let go. There are speech codes in, in every form of employment, except for this one, because this is a podcast, and it's mine. So I can say anything I want, really. And all you got to do is say, ah, I don't like it. And I hope you like it, actually. And I hope you'll become a member of, by the way, Liberty One TV. Liberty One TV. And check out my show every day uh, at this time, uh, 4 o'clock Central Standard Time. Joe Namath, um, echoing what I said, actually. Here he is. We have a right. This is America, liberty, a lot of freedoms. Ownership has ownership. Again, if somebody starts walking through here carrying a sign, well, what are the do. powers that be at Fox going to say to you? Excuse me, go do that somewhere else. Don't do it in the workplace. Okay. He just said what I said. <laughs> you know, you don't do it in the workplace. It's the way it works. So a couple of updates with regard to the Vegas shooter, and I have some audio from the uh, from the 32nd floor. A couple of very brave individuals. Uh, Jesus Campos, an unarmed uh, security guard, was up there. And uh, I, I had heard that he arrived after the shooting stopped. Turns out he was there before the shooting started. And the shooter shot through the door about 200 times. 200 bullets. Campos was hit in the leg. 
and he stayed and helped clear the floor. He's a pretty amazing guy. So uh, here's the revised timeline. Authorities revealed that uh, the shooter shot a security guard in the hallway six minutes before he opened fire and uh, shot down on the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival. In their initial count, uh, the police said that he was shot around 10.15, about 10 minutes after the attack. Turns out it was way before. Uh, Campos was shot and wounded at 9.59 as he investigated apparently unrelated alarm for an open door six minutes before Paddock began firing out his window, 10.05. So uh, the revised timeline raised new questions about why it took the police so long to ascertain Paddock's location as they scrambled to figure out where the bullets were coming from. Paddock stopped shooting 10 minutes into this. He stopped shooting 10 minutes into this. Um... That's a, that's a blessing um, because if he had shot more and more and more, many, many more would have died. But for some reason, they don't know why, he stopped his rampage 10 minutes into the, into the shooting. Apparently, he also had some incendiary bullets. He was firing at the uh, fuel tanks, aircraft fuel tanks at the airport in Vegas. Uh, they were about 1,100, 1100 feet from the concert. He was uh, trying to create an explosion possibly killing more than he would by just shooting down below on the concert goers. What a, just a sick son of a bee. Uh, here is some audio from the 32nd floor. Uh, I'm not sure who this is. This is, I do not believe this is Jose Campos, but someone else as the shooting is going on. And I want you to listen to how calm and cool and collected this person is. Call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. Security wants to know if you know a room. It's at the end of the hallway. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you what room. He looked like he fired down the hallway when I got close to the door. Okay. Uh, and then there was some. Uh, there was some bullets, and um, it took a while for the police to get up there. And I. I was listening to a radio station I'm going to be on tomorrow, KXNT in Vegas. And there's been some criticism of the uh, of the police, and the police were not ready for what happened. Um, I shouldn't say that. They weren't armed for what they needed to do, okay? They had to wait for SWAT to get there because they had no idea what was going on in that room. By the time they got there, the shooting was done, but they didn't know if the place was booby-trapped, if the guy was going to fire again. The door had partially been shredded because of all the bullets that came through it. So the police departments generally aren't armed to take on something like this, a guy with 23 weapons in a room. Thousands of rounds of ammunition that can go easily through a bulletproof vest. I just, I'm grateful the guy stopped shooting after 10 minutes. Mandalay Bay is uh, debating what they're going to do with the room, by the way. They may be, uh, they may be uh, shutting it down, apparently. I'm getting another call. I'm doing my podcast. I'll have to call you back. All right. I hope it's nothing major. Oh, yes, and a uh, Columbia College Chicago professor has said that uh, toxic masculinity is to blame for this. The facts of toxic masculinity are rarely discussed after mass shootings as we beat the usual drums of gun control and mental health, but consider the bigger evolutionary picture. Social life requires the domestication of men. Wow. Males must transform from little tyrants competing for females to selfless bodyguards and potential providers. This is uh, from Stephen Asma. His name is Asma. And he wrote that. Bill Clinton says he's heart sick over Hillary's book tour. I was heart sick over Hillary's tour. Apparently, uh, he tossed his copy uh, in the trash, her book. He's heart sick about his wife's blame game tour before Hillary sent the manuscript to the publisher. She gave it to Bill to read, and he made major changes with a red pencil. But she refused to even read his corrections, and he got so furious that he tossed the entire manuscripts in the garbage. He told her the book made her look bewildered, angry, and confused, and that those were poor qualities in a person who aspired to be a world leader. He hated the title, calling it What Happened would only make people say you lost. He urged her to postpone the publication date and rewrite the book, but she yelled at him, the book is finished, and that's now it's going to be published. Since their fight uh, summer uh, last summer over the book, Bill's negative feelings about Hillary's memoir have grown even more intense as she's used her book tour to blame her loss on Russian hackers 
James Comey, and women who didn't vote for. So she told him he was delusional, apparently. It's just very untoward, right? I mean, it's just very kind of uh, unseemly to, uh, to continue this for so long after the election. It really is, uh, you know, probably time to move on. You're not going to be president. I think we can all be thankful for that. <laughs> we can all be thankful for that. Monica Lewinsky is tired of being the punchline on uh, uh, online jokes. Lewinsky, who's now an anti-bullying activist, addressed uh, a meme in an interview about her PSA in real life. There are many ways that I have been able to come forward, but there are certainly times uh, with that meme that's going around when I'm still held frozen in amber from incidents from two decades past. And uh, there are all sorts of memes out there uh, about her. And, you know... She has suffered. The, the former president hasn't suffered. She, is, she has suffered. She's had her life, her life defined by this. She says, I'm not a punchline. I'm a human being, and I, belong, and I belong to people, she says. I'm a daughter. I'm a stepdaughter. I'm a sister. I'm a cousin, a niece, an aunt. I'm dimensional, not just a punchline. And I feel, I feel bad for her. I really do. <clears throat> so there's this uh, dub soap it's kind of like a little short 10-second, um, 13-second Facebook ad. And it shows three women. The first woman is a black woman. She takes her shirt off and reveals a white woman. Then the white woman reveals, takes her shirt off, and she reveals an Asian woman. People are angry because it's just racist in there. And this is everybody's offended. Everybody's offended. <clears throat> it's, it's not racial. They, these people are hearkening back to uh, soap ads, I guess, in the past, in the 20s and 30s, that featured, uh, uh, I heard, a black child and uh, mom going over and taking the soap and rubbing the black off to reveal a white kid. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. This is a Benetton ad, essentially. The actress, uh, Lola Uganyemi said, if I had the slightest inclination that I would be portrayed as inferior or as before and after shot, I would have been the first to say uh, an empathetic no. I would have uh, walked right off the set, out the door. Uh, she said, but the experience I had with the dub team was incredibly, um, was incredibly positive. And everybody's offended. Everybody's offended. Everybody sees race. Everybody uh, sees the pr- th- things through the prison of, of race. And, uh, and I think it's sad. I think it's it's kind of sad. Finally, today, speaking of sad, it uh, looks like Megyn Kelly's um, destroying NBC's morning ratings. Uh, not only ratings plummeting since Megyn joined uh, the, but the Today Show, uh, but the numbers show Kelly's lead-in has also affected Kathy Lee and Hoda Kotb's show, which follows straight afterwards. Kelly's hour of today is down 32% compared to a year ago, and uh, Kathy Lee and Hoda's down 26%. People are alarmed the format for Megan's show doesn't make any sense. Her show distracts from the Today franchise, according to a uh, unnamed source. But she apparently is, is at least posting her highest ratings yet in a key demogra- demographic. I'm assuming that's adults 25 to 54. That is the money demo, ladies and gentlemen. That is the money demo. All right, so that's going to do it for the uh, the show today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you would, please become a member of LibertyOneTV.com. LibertyOneTV.com. It's just $10 a month. $100 a year, $99 a year, actually, and then there's a uh, sponsorship level of $1,000. This is a wonderful new media, and the podcast radio network I'm also a part of. Wonderful media, <clears throat> offering people like me uh, a voice. Before this, there was just newspaper, just television, just radio. And now it's it's a marvelous, marvelous uh, platform for self-expression, and entertainment. And I hope you enjoy it. LibertyOneTV.com, Podcast Radio Network. If you would like to uh, check, uh, d- download my uh, my podcast, just go to iTunes, iHeartRadio, tune in, Google Play, Google Plus, and uh, just look up for Rob Carson Show. If you want to hear it on your, on your uh, Alexa, just say, Alexa, play the Rob Carson Show podcast. She will play the latest edition of it. And that's going to do it for episode number 185. Guys, uh, I want to thank you. Um, I'm going to be on in Vegas Tomorrow and Friday, the 12th and 13th, uh, in the morning um, from 8 to 11 Central Standard Time. Okay? Have a great day. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.
Thanks for listening to The Rob Carson Show. Friend him on Facebook at Carson Show, on Twitter at Rob Carson, and on Instagram. Uh, I think Facebook and Twitter are enough for now. We'll see you soon.